Dear students, this is the second module in the series on protein structure classification. In the previous module, we were looking at the role of domains in the proteins. And we studied that the domains are essentially semi-independent portions within the protein that are able to perform specific function. And each domain may be performing a unique function and if you look at these functions in the context of a protein, so the protein gets functionally enriched. Moreover, these different domains can be used to classify the proteins into their functional aspects. So if a protein has specific domain, then we can say this protein is of a specific type. And hence, can perform a specific function. Now, if we have a structure, if we have a protein structure, how do we identify these domains? Because protein structures are big and we have to really see them in 3D conformation so as to be able to identify independently existing functional regions within the proteins. To answer this question, there are several ways to find out which domains are there in a protein. To start with, the domains are essentially local. So they are locally compact and they are not extending to other parts of the protein. So if you have a protein that contains, let's say, two domains, then these domains are essentially local and isolated from each other. And moreover, if you want to compute their local nests, then you can look at their hydrogen bondings. So the domains will have more hydrogen bonds within themselves as compared to outside. So if you identify such a region where there are lots of hydrogen bonds within a certain portion of the structure, then that may actually be a protein functional domain. Next, if you want to further validate such a domain, then you may look at the core of that domain. As is the case with the bigger proteins, the hydrophobic core is a ubiquitous, is a common characteristic. So for domains as well, the core is always hydrophobic. So if you have now a structure within the bigger protein, that has lots of hydrogen bonds within itself and has a hydrophobic core, then this can be a good candidate for a domain. More so, the domains need to be contiguous, which essentially means that it is not possible to have a domain that is, in, that is existing as two portions within the protein. So the amino acid chain is essentially the contiguous chain within the domain. Next, <clears throat> if you want to look at the overall protein and the domain that is there inside it, then another criteria would be that the domain would have very little contact with the rest of the protein. So it will be something semi-autonomous. It will be functional on, on its own. It will be having lots of hydrogen bonds with itself. It will be having a hydrophobic core and that it will not be having lots of interactions with the rest of the protein or peptide. And lastly, if you take this protein with multiple domains and you immerse the protein in a solvent, then the surface area of the solvent that is in contact with each domain will essentially remain the same. So multiple domains are being covered by the solvent in proportion to their structure. Now, if you have identified the domains, then you will find out that there are only a limited number of domains. I have enumerated them here. For instance, 
there are alpha domains that are consisting of alpha helices mostly and they are performing specific function. If you look at the beta domains, then they'll be constituted by beta sheets and they'll be performing a specific function as well. And then there will be alpha over beta or alpha plus beta domain. So look at each one of them in detail later. Then there are two other types of domains as well that are relatively pure. So they are alpha and beta multi domains as well as the membrane protein domains. So these two domains are important but are few in number. So in conclusion, by simply looking at a protein, you can identify the domains that exist within a protein. So domains are essentially semi-independent, autonomous, functional components of these proteins. And also, once we have been able to identify all the domains in a protein, then we can classify what type of protein it is.